as today we walk and run as we call attention in our city of New Orleans of the importance of recovery from substance abuse. We ask that you may bless us abundantly today, that you may bless all the people that support us, and that you may continue to draw strength from us so that we can continue to fulfill the race that we're in. It is the race of a lifetime. One step at a time. Okay, you're walking today. Was there a day when you couldn't even get up? Yeah, uh, there were lots of days when I couldn't even get up, yes. <laughs> Far too many. Far too many. Yeah. So this brings a lot of joy. Oh, uh, to say the least. Joy and gratitude. One day at a time. Did you know it was going to be this good? Did I know it was going to be this hard? This good? <laughs> no, but I like, I would say, oh yeah, good? No, never would have known. Never? Because you, but I'll tell you as far as hard, it's a challenge and it's an everyday. It's another sunrise, it's another sunset. What you're witnessing here is the absolute miracle of recovery. So many of these people were at death's door. They were in the darkness of addiction and now they continue to walk into the illuminating light of recovery, an ongoing process. It was bad. It was very uh, lonely and dark and uh, I'm so glad I don't have to live that way anymore. Um, it's just so wonderful to feel alive. Terry Johnson danced for joy. He's in recovery from a lifelong addiction to alcohol, pills, and crack cocaine. I've been in recovery for 60 days and I thank God for everything that he gives me. I'd like to thank my family, I thank the committee for putting it together and may God be with all of us. How bad was it for you? What were you doing? Well, I was doing uh, cocaine, uh, alcohol, and you know, I got to the point I just got tired, you know. Sometimes we just got to give up and try to start a better life for ourselves. But there is such joy today. There is joy, and we really did want it to be a celebration, because we do. I mean, you and I all hear the story so often. Um, the, the kids we lose to heroin on the streets in New Orleans all the time, the 80 to 90 percent of violent crime that's tied to substance abuse. Well, what we want to do is change the face of our city. It's a city that we all love. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Without you, this would not be possible. Today, The third annual Walk for Recovery, hosted by Action Here Against Addiction, drew community-wide support, raised money for prevention services, and gave the city a healthy, happy reason to party. You can use it. It's electric. You know it. And to have a party in New Orleans and have fun without drugs or alcohol. It's its a magical thing. People don't think it exists, but it does. And here we are today to show it. it it's just natural fun. I mean, you see human beings being human beings and being who they really are. You know, they're not, they're not infected or intoxicated with, and, and not having any other distractions or affections. I mean, it's really just them. Everybody else having their own personal fun. You feel the same way? I absolutely do. I think that this is for a great cause, and I'm glad and blessed to be here. Just eye-opening to see everyone wanting to change their life, and, you know, Walk for Recovery is significant because it's recovery and it's stepping out of that and stepping in faith of, like, your new life. Media personalities shared their stories and voiced their convictions. Isn't sobriety a wonderful thing? Woo! I'm telling you. You can see all the colors, you can smell all the smells, you can hear reality in its essence, and people look normal, and abnormal people are not interesting to us anymore, are they? <laughs> I know the people I used to hang out with when I drank, I don't understand them at all now. <laughs> they speak a foreign language. I'm so tired of turning on the national news and hearing people say Whitney Houston died of demons and they whisper it. Betty Ford died of demons. No, they didn't. They had an organ, the brain, that was sick, like any other organ, your heart. If you break your leg, you don't say they have walking issues or you don't say they have heart issues or demons. You say whatever the disease is, this is a disease. Politicians got personal. Every family has confronted this disease. I've confronted it with my family. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. We need to confront it. We need to offer help and treatment. We all know that at the end of the day, the individual has to want to get better. But we need to 
try to get more money for mental health and mental treatment, mental care treatment. And law enforcement inspired hope. And I say without any question, without any doubt, we solved the drug problem in the city of New Orleans and we solved the crime problem with regard to the to, uh, to Orleans Parish. We have to recognize this as a sickness, as an illness. And I think that certainly what we try to do in our office is, since many of the people who come into our criminal justice system come in as nonviolent first offenders and they have narcotics violations as a charge, possession of illegal narcotics, we certainly try to divert them. We try to give them an opportunity to help themselves. So while they're in recovery and they're trying to work on their recovery, they're trying to get jobs, they're trying to get housing, they're trying to go to school, they realize all these problems they have because now they have a felony conviction. By building our diversion program, we allow them not to have that conviction, to not have that stigma, that stigma to allow them to do those things that they want to do to move forward in their life. The September walk joined SAMHSA's National Recovery Month activities. People learned that the abuse of alcohol and drugs can rewire the brain causing the brain disease of addiction. Teens who smoke marijuana frequently may lose eight IQ points. And overdose deaths are the number one cause of accidental death in the United States. What is the number one uh, drug or the driving drugs that are sending people into, into your chairs, into um, counseling and help? Unfortunately, Mary Lou, right now it's heroin. Um, and the, the population and the demographic has gotten lo lower and younger and middle class. So it's, it's not even what it used to be. It's not an under the bridge drug anymore. It's out in the schools. Snorted, shot up. Yes, ma'am. And the, the appalling thing is that some of these kids are starting to shoot up at 17 and 18 years old. So they're not even going through the gateway drugs, you know, the marijuana and all. They're going straight to heroin or pain pills. And once they get over the high from the pain pills, they go directly to heroin. For you and you alone have kept me from my grave. For this, I am yours. Karen Moore's son overdosed last year. It is so extremely hard, uh, Mary Lou. I have chosen to um, try and do everything that I can to help others, um, to help other young people uh, to save their lives and also to support the families. And so often the families and the mothers get so weary trying to save the children. And my message to them is, you know, don't give up the fight because when you give up the fight, it's over and you've lost him. Cunning, baffling, and powerful. There is an intergenerational epidemic of addiction because addicted moms are giving birth to addicted babies. It's the power of addiction is that the, even though they're pregnant and have an addictive disorder, they're really no different than the common addict, that they're really resistant to treatment also. The disease of addiction, the brain disease of addiction, is a preventable disease. That's something we believe in and we want people to know. It is so preventable and uh, we, ne we need to educate the population, the populace about that because they don't understand it as a preventable disease. You know, we talk about the prevention of all other diseases and this disease is preventable if we can stop youth from using substances substances like alcohol early on, if we can give youth really good information, if we can teach parents the, the science of the brain disease of addiction, I think we can make a difference. It is a preventable disease. It's, it's like any other, uh, it's like diabetes, if you were, if, or type 2 diabetes, I should say. If you're never exposed to this bad diet, lack of exercise, these sorts of things, which puts you into um, a high risk for diabetes, then you would never, you would never get it. And so if you aren't exposed, you could have genes that would make you susceptible to alcoholism, but if you prevented yourself from ever being exposed to constant, you know, high volume, high intake, you would never get it. And so prevention is, you know, it's the, uh, the pound of prevention, you know, is worth the ton of the cure, the penny. You can, you, you can value it any way you want. It's huge. Chantel Xavier University is committed to this recovery walk. This is your third year. Why is it so important to have the health care component? Yeah, Xavier is, is very important for us to address health care as Xavier educates a lot of pharmacists and medical professionals. And part of the mission statement includes promoting a more just and humane society. So it's very important to have leaders across the global world who work towards community service, which is very important to the institution. And we want to continue to um, work to prevent substance abuse, but also to provide treatment for individuals who are in recovery. So overall, we want to make sure that everyone has access to health care and that they can receive the appropriate treatment to be successful.
and their recovery. Raising awareness, removing the stigma and shame, and promoting overall health are critical for recovery and for a safer, drug-free community. Specifically in the health department, we are working towards ways to create health and wellness. And we work on problems related to violence, behavioral health, healthy lifestyles. And the bottom line is that addiction uh, affects all of those things. And no matter what programs we put in place in terms of prevention, if we don't do something to work on the, the bigger issue of addiction, th those programs can't work. Uh, addiction affects almost every family that I know uh, in some way, shape, or form. And, and people are lost in how to do it and know what to deal with it as a disease. We're building an infrastructure so that we can talk about recovery, but now we can really walk the walk of recovery. There are more than 23 million people living in recovery here in the United States. And this celebration is just a small example of all those people who are living lives of hope. Why is it so much better now? For somebody who's listening like, no, it's, I like the hot. Well, it, it, you know, and it's funny, uh, my first year um, in sobriety, or even maybe first couple months, you know, I, I thought that I needed pain pills, drugs, anything to get through a day, to, to, to get up, to go to work, to go to school, um, and, and it, it's such not the truth. Um, you know, those things helped me back from living my life, and I was very fortunate to get sober a month before my first child was born, and, and I've been able to give to my kids what I wasn't given. My father wasn't around in my life, and uh, due to this disease, you know, so I was able to, and I have been able to, be a father to my children and, and uh, be, a, be a good husband and uh, a good employer, employee, um, you know, so it, it's, it's done things for my life that I can't even imagine, you know. I, I actually feel blessed. I have a program by which I live my life where if I'm struggling or can't find an answer, I know where to look for, the, for those answers. He's been 10 years sober and I know that at the time, I remember sitting in the meeting and some other guy was talking about being sober and I thought, I was crying and it's like, oh, am I ever, are we going to ever be there? So today to have him as CEO and the dedication he has to it, um, and as a family we do, we support him, we come out for these events, it meant more to me than when he graduated from college. Optimistic resiliency is fueling the recovery movement in New Orleans, and as more and more voices for recovery speak out, we see living proof that there is a solution to the brain disease of addiction. We're here not because of the addiction, but because we're here to celebrate um, life without alcohol and drugs. And everybody's here and happy and healthy. Everybody has somebody in their life, whether it's a friend, a coworker, a family member, that life, their life has been touched by addiction. And it, it, it touches it in so many different ways, depending on your closeness to the person. And if everybody is aware of it and how to prevent it and how to treat it, that we can make small steps with, with everybody in your life to try to overcome this horrible brain disease. As we're part of this huge team fighting addiction. It's not just us and it's not just our little stories, but we're affecting and working as an entire community against addiction. And there is hope, healing hope. Absolutely, and, and it's so rewarding. Like you said, I've been in this a long time, but it's so exciting for me to see so many young people now that, you know, like Joyce and just taking on the banner and, and Terry and you, keeping it going, you know, and so it's, it's gonna change. We're gonna change our city and our state. Rewired. There is life after recovery, and you are bigger than that, and there's a lot more than to, your, to you than your addiction. You don't see it right now, but with treatment, with support, you'll see who you can be after that, who you really are outside of that stronghold. Restore. I don't know where I'd be today without it, without recovery in my life. Real life. So it's never too late to get into recovery. Well, it's never too late. I don't care if it's 8 to 80. If the addiction is there, and you know, and you can help yourself, that's the best thing you can do. This is Mary Lou McCall. Yeah.